Eight. Ugh, I went out of town for a little while, but I made the mistake of using this app called Bear B and B. We're so happy you're staying with us. Just a reminder, we ask that you not use the DVD player, but you can watch any of the VHSs. We have Clear and Present Danger, Son of the Mask. Oh, and here's most of a puzzle. Okay, well, I don't want any of that stuff. Fine. Well, if the phone rings and we're not around, just take a message. God is the best stuff. What's up, guys? Mark Fleetwood here. Welcome back to the Daily Grind Trader. And as you can probably already tell from the introduction, um, while trying to stay lighthearted, the bears are currently in control. Um, with that being said, today's video is going to be all about Bitcoin, how it's going to affect the market, how far can we expect this to go down, and for how long do we expect it to be, and is this a total trend reversal? Is this a bull buster? Stay tuned, guys. I'm going to tell you everyone everything that I think I know. All right, let's get the obvious out of the way first. I am not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. And you should not be taking financial advice from some guy on the internet. And please know that you make any and all trades at your own risk. All right, guys, we're taking a look at Bitcoin on the daily chart. Um, as you can see, the drawing of the triangular, triangular pattern is a little bit different. I was wrong in my initial drawing and thinking that it was a flat um, you know, a flat topped ascending triangle going straight across um, I was missing this resistance and I was coming from here across and uh, well at the time it looked clean it looked like it's what it should be um, having it drawn this way is much more um, accurate in the sense of how the price action went how the how it broke and more accurate to uh, where it could potentially be going all right guys you can see i have a highlighted area here and this highlighted area um, was the most probably the most important three days that we had and it did not work out so this line of uh, support and resistance was around fifty five thousand seven hundred dollars eight hundred dollars uh, excuse me and a, a yawn there sorry uh, and we rode that resistance for or the support line for you know, one well, we broke through there but that was when that long wick down one two three the fourth day we just crushed it down and that was that was the beginning of the end for for the potential to get back into this wedge and not have this breakdown be a false break um, trading so close to this 50-day moving average at the same time all it took was to have one day to come above this and then that 50-day moving average would act, like, act as support again would act as a dynamic support and it would you know bring us right back in to that wedge and then potentially back through it um, you can see at other points where the 50-day moving average has been a point of support for us a support there we touched it here and it became a support here uh, we came here it actually fell through and it came right back and it stopped trading right around it on top of the 50-day moving average and we just could not get it back above the pressure. The bear pressure was too strong. Um, you know, today, people will say that today or yesterday, um, Biden's announcement or the talk about the capital gains tax, I don't know if it's been announced that he's sending it through Congress. I don't pay that much attention, um, but the proposed or potential increase of the capital gains tax um, costs selling in the stock market selling in the crypto market that could all be true that could could be the case but th it looks like this was already set in motion it looks like this downturn was already set in motion coming out of this wedge and is it correlation and not causation or is it causation from the announcement 
I, I'm not going to get into arguing that point, whether the announcement caused it or the technical analysis was already there and it was just correlated around the same time. Uh, I'm not going to jump down that rabbit hole because I could have arguments with people for hours on that. And still, neither one of us will know who was right or who was wrong. Um, but doing this with this, the way this chart looks, I firmly believe that we're going to hit support around 47,000. 750 ish um, if we break through that um, the technicals want to come down to 45 um, 45 is the range that it um, will be targeted based on this wedge um, well I've really got a benefit of yawning excuse me now I know how you guys feel watching my videos how do you do it um, <laughs> sorry, let me get off that tangent, but, uh, the technicals alone, when I come down to 45, 47, I think is going to be a strong enough support to where we hit 40, 47 and we don't, we don't quite finish out how bearish it wants to go. And we sit around 47 for a little bit, you know, 47, 500, 47, 800, somewhere in that range. We sit there for a couple of days. I think within a week we're back up. Uh, I don't want to say within a week. I say in a, a week or two, somewhere in the range, in a 14-day range, I think we're back on an up, uptrend. I think we're back probably above 51, 52, testing, you know, sitting on this as a support line and at a resistance line, and then we'll, we'll be back up. I still think the year um, of 2021 will remain bullish. I still think we have, you know, four, six, nine months left of being really bullish. And as a lot of people still target $100,000 for Bitcoin for the year, um, I don't think it's out of reach. I don't think that by Christmas, um, that $100,000 Bitcoin is out of reach. Now, also with that being said, um, you know, if things don't go the right way, if things don't rebound, and we sit on this resistance for a little bit, or the support, and we test this support too many times, and then we fall through it. And then we test this support too many times, and we fall through it. Um, after 45, I mean, we're looking at 38, really, as our, our next, like, real support. And what we get sometimes is um, you, get, you get gaps. And um, see if I can make a parallel channel, like, this is a, I'm going to try to make one here. This area here is, is a gap that never really, like, never really got tested. It got hit, I mean, a single wick up. You know what? Nope, I am wrong because there was definitely the resistance here. On the, if, if this had never been touched prior, and there wasn't a resistance here, this area would just be a gap, and I wouldn't be surprised if the price sat there for a little bit, filled that gap, and then kind of bounced off. Uh, but because there was already a resistance there, um, I, I don't see that being valid anymore. Um, so I can go ahead and delete this. But again, um, you know, that would be a line at 40,000 if we drop below the 45. I think if we drop below 45, I think we could be potentially looking at a full market reversal and that would be kind of scary we'd be looking to take long positions out and we'd likely have to sell some uh losses on long positions and and, and start going bear market strategies and start taking shorts and and flipping your fibonacci's over to see the retracement on the uh on the rallies and see how far you can rally up and see if you can buy bottom and and get rallies or play the short games and, and and run shorts but that being said guys that's that's where I'm looking with um, with Bitcoin again uh, you know I got one picture real quick so this is something that we were looking at and this was the range like I was telling you at, at 55,000 and uh, 55,722 is what we need to get above uh, we did not, it, there was still the potential to, to break up, even as of, you know, earlier today, or yesterday on the chart, but earlier today, and the fact that I haven't been to sleep yet. 
there was still potential today to break up. It just it didn't happen. It, if we could finish a day above that 55-7 range, it would have been, you know, I, I don't like to be an alarmist. I don't like to be an overhyped person. So I, I really didn't say or make anything here because nothing was set in stone and you could really shift people's mentalities um, by making it a call too quickly when when two very different and two obviously different positions are possible in a, in a, in a very small window. So uh, it was definitely something that we were looking at, but you know, I, I didn't have uh, confidence either way. I was, I was more hopeful than confident in an upswing, but uh, I think my mind was telling me to prepare, prepare, prepare for the down. Um, but I didn't want to make that call, and you know, being an alarmist. But again, here we are. Um, that's pretty much all I got for Bitcoin. Real quick, um, touching up on uh, H bar and one. H bar is getting close to getting back to the 61.8 line. Um, and at this point, because I don't know how much further the Bitcoin is going to go down, I'm not going to say, hey, this is deeply discounted right now. This is the lowest you're going to get. It could very easily come back down and touch 20 cents or 19 cents or 18. Um, I hope it doesn't go below the 7, uh, 7.68 mark. Uh, but at this point, down, down, down prices are possible. And you know, Ravencoin is on the... 13 cent line and that's a uh, you know I think 12 7 is a was a significant retrace from the from the initial yeah I mean here was the initial retrace and the candle ended up closing at 1308 and I mean we're pretty much right there on that initial retrace we're right back to the initial retrace after the first run up in February um, it's interesting how things tend to stop in the same ranges but that was a critical support that was found at that point in time. So am I going to say the support's going to hold? I don't know. I, I, I truly, I do hope it does. And it puts us right on the, well, it puts us right on the 99 day moving average um, or the 100 day moving average. But yeah, it's a very critical level of support right now. I think it will hold, but I'm not going to make a call on that uh, HBAR. Again, in a position where we touch the 99-day moving average. And it's not a bad thing. It's it's really not. Uh, this is putting us back closer to um, a real market. Because for a while, we were in like a space market. We were in a literal, like things are mooning and skyrocketing so much that you couldn't tell that the 99 day moving average was there, we're just so far away from all the price action. So I think this is gonna be, um, I think it's gonna be okay. I think it's gonna be okay on the overall. And then, wow, right here we hit it too. So we're right on here. This this 100 day moving average might be the most um, powerful dynamic support. Um, so, you know, with this here, we might actually be okay. We might not hit the $47,000 range. I think we will, but we might not um, because we are right on that 99-day moving average. Um, so with that being said, guys, I'm going to end the video here. Um, again, my trading view on Binance.us is not working, so I had to go and use uh, Binance. I can't trade on regular Binance. It doesn't, it doesn't jive with the U.S. I guess I don't know what the problem was, um, but... We have those resistances and the support lines. I think 47 would be what I believe this 47,750 will be touched. Um, actually, I hope I'm wrong, but again, we're right on the 99 day moving average, which again, for every, you know, the 25 day is a strong dynamic support. The 50 day is a strong dynamic support. The 99 day is a critical and a very strong dynamic support so we might be you know we might be primed to bounce off this we might wake up tomorrow and everything is right as rain and we are in a big bullish engulfing candle 
but I think I think we touched 47 first. So with that being said, guys, I'm gonna call it here. Um, again, feel free comment. I love feedback. I love comments. I love responding. Uh, I try to keep it respectful. You guys can say whatever you need to say. If you think I'm wrong, if you think charting has no place in crypto, um, I did have a conversation about that. Um, and the gentleman, uh, AMG, I, I respect his opinion. And we, we had a conversation back and forth. And and we, we don't agree. We won't agree. But you know, I appreciate him commenting on the video. I appreciate him taking the time to, to have an exchange with me. And it's all respect. It's all love. So, um, again, I appreciate that, guys. I love the interaction. So, uh, comment, like, subscribe, all that good jazz. Let me know what you think. And as always, until next time, peace.